Today I'm going to talk about my top three lenses for beauty photography. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and one of my specialties is beauty photography. I shoot for skincare brands, cosmetics, all different sorts of products in the realm of beauty, and of course I also do portraiture. Now one of the top questions I get all the time is what is the best lens for beauty photography? And the thing is, there is no one best lens, it's the right tool for the job. So in fact, I actually have three different lenses that I use most often for my beauty work, and I'd like to explain why I use which lens and in which situation. So, the three lenses that we're going to cover now are the 85 1.2, the 70 to 200, and the 180 millimeter macro. All right, so let's begin by talking about one of portrait photographer's favorite lenses, the 85 1.2. Now in this case, I'm shooting the RF 85 1.2 to pair up with my Canon R5. Now the reason I usually gravitate towards that 85 millimeter lens is if I want the image to be super sharp and I'm seeking a really narrow depth of field. So I can shoot wide open and have parts of the detail of the face just melt away, completely blur out the background. Now to be honest, most of the time in the studio, I'm not shooting at that wide aperture. So I'm only grabbing my 85 if really wide aperture is part of the concept. Most of the time for my commercial work and my paid work, well, that's simply not what they're looking for. But when I'm doing something soft or painterly or dreamy, then an 85 is exactly what I'm looking for. Next up is a 70-200 2.8 lens. Many portrait and wedding photographers love this lens and we also do over here in beauty photography. And the reason being is it's so versatile. So for example, if I'm shooting the beauty look you see here and I wanna get her shoulders in and the entire headpiece, no problem, I'll shoot at a 70 millimeter focal length. But then if I see her connecting with camera and I wanna crop in tighter, no problem, I zoom all the way out to 200 millimeters. And so it allows me to get a wide range of different crops and shots without having to change my lens. Now the lens that I have here I mentioned is a 2.8. There's also a 4.0, but I like having the 2.8 in this instance because if I do wanna shoot at a wider aperture, blur out the background, go for something softer, I have that option. The 4.0 is quite nice because it is a little bit more compact and it's lighter, which is great on a long shoot day. Last but not least is my macro lens. Now the focal length that I have chosen is a 180 millimeter, but Canon also has a fantastic 100 millimeter macro lens. I wanna talk a little bit about the differences. Now the 100 millimeter macro lens is crazy, crazy sharp. And many portrait photographers will use this lens because they can use it for close-up shots. Maybe they're a wedding photographer and they're getting a close-up of a ring, but then they can back up just a little bit and get a nice tight beauty shot. Now, I love the 100 macro. However, most of the time I reach for the 180 millimeter macro. Reason being, I have more working distance. What that means is if I wanna get a nice tight shot in the subject's face, just the eye or just the lips, I actually can be a little bit further back than I would be if I had a 100 millimeter macro. The little bit of difference between the focal lengths, 100 to 180, actually allows me to still fill the frame, but I can be further away from my subject. One of the things that I want to mention is that my go-to camera is my Canon R5. The huge files, the 45 megapixels, allow me to be able to crop in later and get even closer detail in my beauty photography. Also, the face and eye tracking allow me to more easily focus on the eye. But you'll notice that the lenses I have here are a mixture of EF and RF lenses. So the R5 works with RF lens line. Now, the reason I wanted to mention this is I can easily use an adapter to allow my EF lenses to work on my R5. So if you decide to upgrade to an R5, don't worry, you can still use all of your EF lenses in order to achieve these beauty shots. So you don't have to rebuy things, you can mix and match to see what suits you. Now, by the way, if you're loving the shots that I'm showing you in this video, it's achieved with just one light. I have a white beauty dish and a grid, and it's shot on a white background. So some of that light from the beauty dish spills on the background, giving me some separation on my subject. And I have the beauty dish off to the side to give her a little bit of sculpting and drama. And then all I'm doing is in post-processing, I'm changing it to a high contrast black and white. Super simple, but it's all about the beauty I put in front of my lens. All right, so as you're looking at these three different lens choices, you might think, which is best for me? And well, it depends on the way you shoot and your style. 
all of these lenses have different characteristics that may make them valuable to you, whether that is the wider aperture, the versatility, or the ability to get really tight crops. Now, if you wanna see the gear used in the making of these videos and the gear that I talked about throughout this video, be sure to check the links in the description below or visit adorama.com. And of course, if you want a lot more great information like this, be sure to subscribe because I have a lot of these videos coming your way. See you next time, guys.